I'm Daniel Boone. Welcome to the Siege of the Blockhouse. Some of you men take a position in the blockhouse and fire through the windows. You'd have a high point of view up there. Where we're at today is the location of the Wilderness Road Blockhouse at one of our annual Siege at the Blockhouse events. Uh, this event uh, portrays life in 1775 and what the settlers in this that traveled through this area in the late 1700s would have experienced. Uh, and it presents both sides of the story, the Native American side of the story and the individuals that of European descent. I've been here at the blockhouse waiting on your arrival here for several days. I understand you want to go through the gap and some of you are going to Boonesboro and some of you want to go up to Logan's Fort. Now I have John Floyd with me who is building the station over near Logan's and over near Jim Harrods on the Dick River and he's going to be guiding you folks along the way there that to be going that way. When we leave here, I'm going to guide you up to Martin Station. We may, we may spend the night there. If we get there in time before dark, we may go on to the Gap and camp there. But when we reach the Hazel Patch, that's where we're going to park company. Um, it appears that today we have two of our riders that have gotten into an argument on the way over here as to who has the fastest horse. and. Uh, and so they're going to race here in just a few minutes just to see who has the fastest horse. Ladies and gentlemen, what we've uh, recreated here is actually a historical occurrence that occurred uh, down at Sycamore Shoals, what you folks might call Elizabethan today. Um, in 1775, a horse race did indeed occur there at the Sycamore Shoals, whereupon uh, a man named Crabtree uh, killed an Indian. And uh, that, of course, led to great hostilities among the Cherokee and uh, probably one of the uh, events that, uh, that led to the Cherokee War on the frontier. What a long range effect this will have on the safety of these people here, what that fool he did there. He's a young man. Less to deal with. We'll have a lot more to deal with them before this is over. Do you mind my words on that? Captain, we have not met, sir, and I've not made your acquaintance, but uh, my name is Captain Joseph Martin of Albemarle County. Well, Captain Anderson invited me here today, and he has, uh, he has asked me to bring my militia company, and, and we'll, uh, we'll stand guard here at, at his blockhouse. We, um, we had an incident this morning, sir, that has uh, disturbed me greatly. Uh, Mr. Crabtree, uh, Isaac Crabtree, he's a hothead, sir. One of the settlers, as they call themselves, assaulted one of our warriors. Just shows that their character is not what it should be. As we were attempting to take that warrior back to camp, the person who assaulted him shot him in the back. That's why we don't want these people moving into our country. They can't be trusted. Many of them are criminals from their own country. And this Mr. Crabtree, well, sir, we had a, a, a horse race. We were having a fair time. And Crabtree, he attacked, the, he attacked one of these, these Cherokee. And sir, it was, uh, it was unduly called for. And we broke them apart. We wrestled them down. And I swear to you, sir, before God, that sir, he, he came up on the hill and he, he pulled his musket, sir, and he fired and he killed the Indian. Now, I've put him under arrest and I will deal with him later this evening and after, after we have a fine meal, eh? I, just, I do not understand this, uh, this mentality of Crabtree and, and, and Mr. Blackmore and their hotheads, sir, and that gets people killed. Now, Captain Boone, I'm sure that, that, uh, that the Cherokee have sent runners and they're probably bringing more in as we speak right now, Captain. Uh, this Crabtree, he has, uh, he's caused quite a ruckus for us, sir, and, and he's, uh, I fear he uh, will, will cost lives before this evening is over. Lads, keep your eyes open. Who set the children out? Who set the children out? That's what I'm trying to figure out, sir. Whose children are they, sir? <laughs> Look, hey! Run! 
Later in the day, we managed to capture a young lady, bring her to our camp and adopt her into the Cherokee people, into our clan. Purpose of that is to replace the person who was killed this morning. In Cherokee society, balance is the key. When someone in a clan is killed or captured, someone needs to be captured or killed in place of that person. Later, as the Unega, the whites, wanted to exchange prisoners, because they had captured one of our women, we agreed to discuss the matter with them, encourage them to go back to their home country, leave us at peace. Then we agreed to the exchange. You have one of our women. We have one of yours, your people. She will not be harmed. You have my word on that, as I believe by knowing your honor that our woman will not be harmed. But we're here to see if we can exchange one of your people for one of our people. And lay your muskets and rifle on the ground, everyone. Although we disagree on many things, including living here and living on your land. But as a show of faith and honor on my part, which and these people's part, and I know that I can trust you to do this, we're going to relinquish your prisoner first. Mother, they treat me well over here. No. No. They were pretty surprised to find that the young lady we had captured decided to stay with us. Decided of her own free will. Because among our people, women are treated much better. Women have the opportunity to own land, and own houses, cornfields, the opportunity to speak in council, to decide matters of life and death. Whereas if she'd have stayed with her own people, she would have had no rights to own property, no right to vote, so she decided to stay with us. At the annual siege of the blockhouse, that's sponsored by the Daniel Boone Wilderness Trail Association, we have numerous vendors, craftsmen from the 18th century demonstrating uh, everything from basket weaving, uh, music of that era, uh, children's games of that era that the public can come and participate in and have a hands-on experience of what it took at that time, what they did for entertainment, how they, what they ate, how they prepared what they ate. Uh, medicine in that time was obviously very primitive and, and some of the herbs and the natural things they used to, uh, for their medicine and for their doctoring. So those things are on display during the siege. It's important that we tell this story. It's a very real part of our heritage. And there, there are two sides to it. There are two pieces of it. There were two great cultures that collided here in the mid-1770s, uh, in addition to the conflict that was taking place for American independence from England, there was also a conflict between the Indian culture and the white culture. And I feel it is very important this day and age that, that we know where we came from as a, as a nation, as a people, um, and living history will it's very unique. It is the opportunity to interpret history as it was. It gives people the opportunity to not only understand history, which is what interpretation is. Interpretation is an attempt to create understanding, but it, it gives them the opportunity to touch, smell, and taste history.